Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux for Noobs. In today's video, we are going to install Linux Mint. I am making this video to help more people get started with Linux. Earlier, I was posting videos mainly focused on terminal commands, but then I realized that the very first step for anyone trying Linux is to install Linux. So think of this as Linux Step 101. Now, why Linux Mint? The reason why I have picked this distro is because it is commonly accepted in the Linux community that Linux Mint is one of the most beginner friendly distribution out there. It's stable, familiar, easy to use and it works out of the box. If you want to try any other distro like Ubuntu, Fedora or Zorin, feel free to try those distros and the installation process will be nearly the same. So you don't have to worry about that. Before we begin, the first thing you will need is a USB pen drive. It should be at least 8 GB. Here is something important. You might see many YouTubers recommending USB 3 or 3.1 drives because they are much faster. However, I would suggest using a basic USB 2 pen drive. You might be asking why? Because some laptops don't have proper support for USB 3 or 3.1. You might face some problems during boot and that can cause installation issues. USB 2.0 is more universally compatible and less likely to cause any problems, especially if you are new to the Linux world. So keep it simple, go with a regular USB 2.0 drive. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open up our browser. I'm gonna type Linux Mint. We need to download the ISO from the official website. So if I see here, there are three additions. The first one is Cinnamon. The second one is XFCE. The third one is Mate or Mate. I'm gonna go with Cinnamon Edition because it is the most popular one. So I'm gonna click on download. Then I have then I have different mirrors. Depending on your location, you can choose the closest mirror to your country. And since I am in India, anything from Singapore, China works for me. So okay so i have indian servers i'm gonna click on that now i will fast forward the video once the iso is downloaded meanwhile what we can do we can download rufus rufus is a tool which will help us to create a bootable usb drive uh i'm gonna go with this one the standard version all right, now we have downloaded the Rufus and Linux Mint ISO. I'm gonna plug in my USB drive and then I'm gonna open up Rufus. Click on yes. So here it has detected my USB drive successfully and then I'm gonna click on select and now I will select my Linux Mint ISO. For the partitioning scheme, I'm gonna use GPT and target system UEFI because my laptop support that. Most laptops manufactured after the year around 2013-14 support UEFI. If UEFI isn't enabled by default, you will need to go to your BIOS settings, enable the UEFI mode and if that doesn't work then you need to check the secure boot option as well and if it is enabled you need to disable it and if you don't know how to open up your boot menu you can search on google all you need to do is google your laptop brand plus how to enter bios common keys are usually f2 f10 f12 delete escape sometimes even shift or spacebar so I'm going to hit on start. I'm going to keep all the setting as it is. All right, our USB pen drive is ready. Now I'm going to unplug this USB and plug this USB 
to the laptop on which I am going to install the Linux. Let's move on to that one. Once you boot from your USB drive successfully, you're gonna see a screen like this. This is called the GRUB bootloader. If you don't see a screen or your system fails to boot from the USB, try plugging in the USB into a different port, preferably a USB 2.0 if available. Now if you are not sure how to enter the BIOS or boot menu, don't worry. The process varies depending on your laptop or motherboard brand. Here's what you can try. First you need to shut down your computer. Then as you press the power button to turn it back on, either hold or repeatedly tap the boot menu key. So you can always google your motherboard or laptop brand name and search for the boot key or the boot menu key. Then you need to hit enter. Alright, so now we are in the live environment. Uh, you can always go ahead and double click on this install Linux Mint. However, if you want to feel the distribution, the desktop environment, you just want to try it, you can always do that first. So this is the Cinnamon desktop. I think the Cinnamon desktop works the best on Linux Mint. The closest distro which does the Cinnamon desktop right would be Fedora. and. I'm gonna go ahead and install the Linux Mint. You need to double click on that. Okay, so this is the installer you will see. You can select your language here. I'm gonna go ahead with English, click continue. Then you can select your keyboard layout. I'm gonna go ahead with English US and then continue. It will ask me whether I want to connect to the Wi Fi or not. I'm gonna do it later because my laptop is very slow. And since I'm recording this video, if I connect to the Wi Fi network, there is a probability that it's gonna install the latest updates. So I do not wanna do that. Not right now. Click on continue. Uh, this is always a good practice to install multimedia codecs so you don't face any problems while playing videos, TV series, movies, etc. I'm gonna click on continue. So this is the step where most people get confused or do make mistakes. Since I have two drives in this laptop, one is SSD, the other one is hard drive. On SSD, I have installed the Arch Linux and my hard drive is empty. However, I will replace the Arch Linux with the Linux Mint for the purpose of this video. So if you click on install Linux Mint alongside Arch Linux, usually this setup works great with Linux with Linux. However, if you want to try dual boot with Windows, then you might face some problem especially during the boot up so you have to configure your bootloader accordingly nonetheless i am going to raise disk and install a fresh linux mint you can always click on something else if you click on something else it will give you the option to install mint on other drive for example if i click on this if i continue it's gonna show me all the storage devices which I have. So I can always like erase, format, you know, create a new partition table on different storage devices. I can always do that. But however, just to keep the things simple, I'm gonna go ahead and delete my Arch installation and replace that with the Linux Mint. I'm gonna click on continue click my storage device on which I want to install. Now this is a very important step. You have to be very careful on which device you want to install your system or the Linux Mint in this case. If you select the wrong drive, you're gonna end up losing your data. So make sure before you do anything, 
any of this process you need to make a backup of your files and I'm gonna click on the SSD I'm gonna install now then the installation will begin so here's the warning that it's gonna remove all the protection which I have currently and it's gonna create new ones etc I can click on continue I have to select my region I am in India I'm gonna select India then it's gonna pick up my time zone now here you will get an option to name your computer your name and a username you don't necessarily have to use your real name here it's not Facebook or Instagram you can always use any name you want I'm gonna call myself noob noob it, I'm gonna call it Linux noob and this is the name of my computer I'm gonna call it Jarvis I know it's cringe but why not I'm gonna pick a username I'm gonna call myself again noob while making a username you cannot use uppercase letters okay so it will say that it only should contain lowercase letters digits hyphens and underscores so I'm gonna call myself noob you need to set a password you need to remember this password I'm gonna type my password it is sure I know but doesn't really matter because this is just for the purpose of this video I'm gonna I will have the option whether I want to get logged in automatically or do I have to type the password every time I log in so you should select this require my password to log in okay click continue now it will install the Linux Mint alright our installation is complete if you click on continue testing you can still go around in the live environment or you can click on restart now to use your freshly installed Linux Mint now we have successfully installed the Linux Mint now you can just connect to the internet clicking on here then you can just you know do the Linux stuff whatever you want you can go ahead and install your favorite softwares the good thing is the Linux Mint has an inbuilt store or you can go ahead and customize try different themes that's it for today's video if you liked it hit the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon thank you for watching this video and i will see you in the next one bye